Welcome to the channel, my name is Facecast, and this is a Spider Queen Formation Building Guide. In this guide, we'll go over the best troops and heroes, and where to place them in your formation. At least we'll try to, the Spider Queen is a lot different than other honor hunting bosses, so there are many things to cover. Before we begin, check out the gorgeous Hyper X gear, down in the description below, and get your loved ones the gaming keyboards they think about when they're alone. Also, like this video, and subscribe to the channel for more Art of War content. Support troops are troops that aid your army. They heal, provide shields, and play other roles. Brawlers and pilgrims are used in all types of honor hunting formations for their abilities to heal and shield friendly troops and heroes. Their skills keep your army alive longer, which should equal more damage. When implementing brawlers and pilgrims into your army, try starting off with three or four of each, and consider placing them in the front two rows, in the back rows, or in a unique pattern that just works for whatever reason. Brawlers and pilgrims work well together in different different positions. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that every position you put them in will cause a type of reaction, so if you place them in the back, their skills will take longer to trigger and so on. Nuns are healers that can avoid damage, cause delay, scatter around your army, and more. Spider Queen formations work great with anywhere between 0 to 4 nuns, in the back or middle rows. I'm sure some players may find success with more nuns, depending on the troops they have available, but between none and 4 usually works for me. And that was a pun, let me know if you recognized it. Down in the comments below. I like to personally position nuns in the middle rows around the fifth column, but I also have seen them work surprisingly well in the front row. Necromancers are very interesting when it comes to the Spider Queen. They are ranked 19th in the most damage against her, which isn't great, but if they can stay alive, their skeleton spawns can cause a lot of damage and do other things like distract enemy spiders and maybe even lower the frame rate a little bit. Necromancers work great in the front and back rows. However, I have found the most success when they are placed in the back three rows without troops like Peltis that restrict the flow of their skeleton spawns from passing through, and when there are no more than 18 or 19 in your army. I understand that most people don't have 18 or 19 necromancers, and in this scenario, I would recommend hiding them away from the front and back edges, and in a position where they can effectively spawn their skeletons. This might be a little strange for some of you, but you may find that your army gets more damage when you place a single random troop like a frost archer or pirate ship in your formation. A single frost archer in the center column is a tactic many players employ, but other troops like pirate ships also have the same type of impact, so try this out and see if it works for you. The Spider Queen is fun because you can effectively use tanks like pumpkin guards and stone golems against her, but tanks aren't always needed and you may find yourself getting more damage without one or with one, two, or three in your formation. Pumpkin guards are great at taunting enemy spiders and they can fill a nice role in a variety of formations. One or two pumpkin guards in the front two rows are great at taunting enemy spiders and keeping them away from your army, which will help you last longer and in return gets you more damage. A single stone golem can actually get a lot of damage against the Spider Queen, in fact it's ranked second amongst all troops, but they serve a purpose here as a tank that can sponge damage from the Spider Queen and her spider minions. Consider placing a stone golem in the front row, right in the center column. I ran test analyzing the damage caused by each troop against the Spider Queen and these are the results. Sacred Swordsmen are in first place with 247,000 damage. In second place is the Stone Golem with 172, 900 damage. Followed by the Soul Hunter in third place with 140, 400 damage. And Pirate Ships in fourth with 136, 300 damage. Then we have Meteor Golems, Rhino Knights, Peltist, Beastmasters, Ghost Assassins, and Yasha. I will leave a link to the spreadsheet in the description if you want to see the results of every troop test. Attacking troops are a little difficult to understand when it comes to the Spider Queen. For example, although a Stone Golem can get you 172,900 damage, 49 Stone Golems in the same army can only get you between 300 and 500k. You really cannot just use a large number of single load troops like Swordsmen, Soul Hunters, and Meteor Golems. You need to add other troops like Witchers, Peltist, and Frost Archers. Troops I recommend using aside from the supporting troops and tanks are Witchers, Peltist, Frost Archers, and Voodoo Dolls. These are the the four troops you currently see the top formations using. And if you do not have these four troops or don't have enough to completely fill your army with them, then check out this spreadsheet in the description, go down the list, and find troops you can use that get you the most damage. 
I also ran tests analyzing each hero from each side using the same basic formation to see which hero could get the most damage. In first place, it's no surprise, it's Jin with 21.41 million damage, followed by Edward in second place with 14.48 million damage, and then everyone is just about the same, averaging about 11 to 13 million. We have Hohenheim, Ali, Apollo, Sienduck, Drake, Arthur, Dracula, and Green. I'll leave a link to this spreadsheet in the description as well, so go check it out if you want to. The hero to get the most damage besides Jin is Edward with a 5 million run from the middle row, and behind him is Ali with a 4.94 million run from the middle row as well. Although these numbers suggest that many heroes are great against the Spider Queen, I have personally found that Arthur works the best from all three sides, but I prefer him in the back because that's where daddy likes it. In addition, I've also seen Edward, Hohenheim, and Ali put up amazing numbers by a lot of different players. Thanks for watching the video. There is just so much to talk about when it comes to the Spider Queen, and some things I can't really talk about in a video, so making a guide to this boss is a little unusual. And if you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing it. Actually, go do it right now. Go subscribe. What are you waiting for? Don't do this to me. Also, please like the video. See you guys later.